Hi, welcome to Art on the Brain. I'm Kelly Drake, and today I want to show you how to paint a close-up of a flower with watercolors. I took these pictures from my irises from my garden this summer and was inspired by all the beautiful textures and colors and layers and the lighting in this shot. So first of all, I just start with a really light pencil sketch so that the pencil marks don't show. And I'm gonna figure out my colors. So here's a basic list of the colors I used in this particular painting. And just starting out, I wanna try two of the main colors and that's a quinacridone gold and then a quinacridone violet. And I just wanna see what the violet does when I put it into the gold wet in wet because this is important for the main um, petals toward the top area of the painting. And that's what I thought, it really bleeds a lot. And so I'm gonna to have to take a different tact with, this, with these two colors when I paint those petals um, that you see at the top of the painting there or at the top of the picture. So I'm gonna start out with the quinacridone gold and I'm just painting wet and wet, um, darker toward the center and then I'm going to let that dry before I put on any of the quinacridone violet. So just touching up a line there. And I'm going to work in sections a little bit away from each other so that uh, nothing bleeds into anything else. So I'm um, working in another petal section here that's not adjacent to the area that's still wet. And again, working wet and wet with some quinacridone gold um, over the white and just varying the values there a little bit just to get a little bit of depth into that petal. And here since I'm using the quinacridone gold I'm gonna um, paint a little bit down here because there's a little bit of gold down there and I want to make sure that shows later on so just gonna paint that now. And because there's a nice um, darker value area down here. I just want to get that in and uh, just mixed this from some of the quinacridone violet that I'm already using and put in some ultramarine blue um, to make that nice sort of a dark eggplant color. And using a little bit of that lighter here and maybe put in a little more blue to get some of that tiger striping um, on the petal that's behind the main petals there. Um, and I think these little stripes are some of the most important textures of this painting. Um, but just doing them real light here so that when I do a wash over, um, it looks like it's all one piece. If I do these too dark, it's going to start to look like, um, like I just drew lines over the top. And uh, as you see, those petals go back into the background and so eventually I want those to go back even though um, they're so beautiful and intricate they still fall back in the piece and these are things you really want to keep in mind when you're watercolor painting is what are the things that you're going to want to push back and what are the things that you want to come forward and where do you want someone to look when they first look at this painting um, my feeling is that they're drawn in to that kind of vortex at the top with all those um, diagonal lines flowing in. And then they move down to that other little uh, block of yellow. And then the eye moves around the piece. So um, even though the whole piece is pretty circular, which is a nice composition, uh, it does have a focal point and it draws you in um, not only into the painting, but into a little bit of the depth of the painting, so it's not just flat. Now just putting some water down and painting some more quinacridone gold, wet and wet, here on this petal. This petal isn't as gold as the petals up top, so I'm leaving a little more white there, knowing that I'm going to go in with the quinacridone violet a little later on. Now same treatment with these petals up top and I'm trying to leave white wherever I see light hitting the petals or whether there's a lighter area of the petal. Um, now some of these lighter areas that don't actually have a light beam hitting them, um, I'll go over with a little bit of that quinacridone violet with lots of water later on and so even though they will show up as lighter 
areas of the petals, they won't show up as glaring light hitting the petal. That'll be um, different. Uh, that, that will contrast with the sharper, whiter areas in the painting. Now here this area I wanted to get darker, and so I used a, a really nice color that Daniel Smith makes, and that's called Moon Glow. And uh, to me it, it appears to be a combination of like a cobalt violet and a burnt umber. Um, and it really pigments out nicely, it granulates, and I like that texture that it gives. So here just using a little bit of that um, blue-violet that I mixed. Um, I think I have a little bit of the cobalt violet, a little bit of the ultramarine blue, possibly a little quinacridone violet um, mixed together there real light to just add a little shadow to that, um, that petal that folds over there. Now just strengthening that edge um, close to the line on the inside of that petal and putting in my quinacridone violet. Now notice I'm not doing this wet and wet. I'm putting it down really strong toward the inner part of the petal and then adding clear water next to it and drying it out a little bit. So I am softening that edge and letting it bleed a little bit but I didn't want it to bleed so much as it did in my sample, so I'm not putting it in wet and wet right into that gold. Um, I just thought it would take over too much. And I want it to stay put a little more than what it was doing there. So now same treatment, wet on dry, and then using some water to draw that paint out a little bit. Now here's a little bit of anthacrinoid red mixed in. Um, just to add a little bit of interest there and it does look like it's a little rosier there where it goes under that other petal on the top. Um, more tiger striping down here. Um, it's a repetition of the pattern above but it's in a little bit more of a blue violet. So added a little more ultramarine blue to this violet and I'm going to go ahead and paint those tiger stripes. Um, and I'm going, I like, I actually look more like butterfly striping, don't they? <laughs> I'm going to call them tiger stripes because that's the way I think of them, but they maybe look like a butterfly wing, actually. Now I'm not too worried about getting that real dark color yet because I know I can always add another layer. Now here there's a little stripe on that inside part of the petal that's even a little more blue, so added a little more blue to that. Touching up my drying. And just putting some of the underpainting there. And now it's time to start doing a second layer. So I'm putting a second layer here of the quinacridone gold. And I limited my colors pretty much to two or three basic col colors and then I add a little more later. But um, in keeping with that real simple color palette, I know this whole thing is going to hang together. So if I need something a little more red, I'm gonna use the anthacrinide red. If I need something a little more blue, I'm going to add some ultramarine. If I need it more gold, I'm going to add some quinacridone gold. And then of course I have that red, reddish quinacridone violet um, kind of mixing into everything. Now just putting some water over this, this petal, and adding a little more red violet to this. Um, I added mostly anthacrinoid red over this because it really pops as you see in the photo and I want it to come forward and be warmer. Um, over here on the left there's actually a little green showing so I mix some of my quinacridone gold in with what I believe is a cobalt green. It's a bright green um, just for that tiny little area there. I'm getting some of my anthacrinoid red mixing it in with my other purples there that I've mixed a little bit of the quinacridone violet and some ultramarine blue and making a nice blue violet color to put into this large petal on the left. Um, doing this wet and wet at first and I like to start a lot of these petals I like to start wet and wet just to give that depth and the lighting. Um, it looks a little more natural that way I think unless it has those uh, 
the real intricate striping, I usually do that wash first. So this petal is getting wet with some uh, water. And uh, because the striping is a little more diffuse here, I went ahead and um, put the quinacridone violet on wet and wet. Um, not a ton of water there, just a little enough to let it um, diffuse itself a little bit. Now, same thing up top here. And you can see what that does, that little bit of quinacridone violet over that quinacridone gold um, deepens it a little bit, uh, knocks down the intensity, and makes it look like it's shaded. Now I'm still wanting this to be brighter, so I'm putting another coating of anthacrinoid red over the top and softening that highlight in the middle with a little water on the edge. And you see how that dries. Um, it's really not bright enough to my taste. So a little later I'm going to pull out another color and put another layer over the top of that to brighten it even more. Um, but first I'm just going to keep working here until I get everything pretty close to what I want. Um, still working that quinacridone violet over the top of the gold. Um, as when one petal dries then I can work on the adjacent petal and um, I think it's a good thing to be working all over the painting at the same time. Um, it helps you keep the values similar and so that when you decide to make a value darker um, you can go in and really be bold with that. You've already got everything else pretty close to the same so you can um, really bring some things out and let other things fall back. Now, these are really important decisions not only when you're first framing your piece um, but also as you keep on working that you know uh, which parts are going to be important, which parts are going to fall back and give you a little bit of depth. So here I'm just putting in some of that little bit of texture that's on this um, petal. It's just kind of a, it looks almost like little veins going through this petal. Um, and it kind of varies between this more reddish violet and this bluish violet. And then there's a little bit of the violet wash over the top to just bring it all together. Now just um, getting some of that moon glow and putting another coat over that bottom area where I just really want that contrast to be nice and dark. And that's going to make the petal in front of it really come and pop forward. Um, I mixed a little bit more. I think I mixed a little moon glow in with the anthacrinoid red. Um, just a tiny bit, um, and I'm trying to darken this petal as well to add more contrast. Not quite as dark as the one behind. Um, and really important, I think, is this kind of blue, um, real blue-violet on the right side of that petal. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. And I may deepen the blue here in a little bit. But back up here to the striping. I'm working on that a little more make sure that gets in there and trying not to get too much paint in there so it doesn't get too dark and overtake the whole painting um, but I do want it to be seen enough so this is a real balance between getting it dark enough and and having it be seen but then not having it get too dark and take over everything I don't want it to compete with the petals in the foreground so one way of making sure that happens is to do a wash over the top. And I'm doing several washes over these uh, stripy petals in the background. Um, some anthacrinoid red, um, some quinacridone gold, and um, end up doing a little bit of all that over the top of both of those petals on the sides. Now warming this up a bit with some anthacrinoid red and get some toilet paper here to blot it a little bit where I wanted a little bit of light um, hitting that petal. And then this petal below is not as deep of a value, so kept uh, put a little more water into that paint and kept it light. Now up here I want more shadow, so I'm deepening that quinacridone gold by just putting another layer over the top, wet on dry, 
And now is when I break out my nice quinacridone rose color. I'm adding a tiny bit of cerulean blue to it, um, just enough to make it a little more uh, purpley or more violet. Um, but what I really want is that real brilliant pink color. And though the quinacridone violet looked perfect when it was wet, when it dried it just lost that um, vivid, bright intensity that I wanted there. So watch as I put on the quinacridone rose how that pops forward. And again left that area in the middle pretty much white and I'm just going to soften the edges with some water. So I don't want to lose that. It gives it some depth. And here more of the quinacridone rose. And sometimes on your palette you may have one or two reds, maybe a warm red and a cool red, and neither one of them is doing it for you, um, especially in florals like this. You really need something that's going to keep hold its brightness. So if you use your palette for several different things like I do, um, I use my palette a lot for painting figures, for painting people, and then I also use it for painting things like this. And so sometimes you have to break out another color when you really need it. And um, it was obvious to me that I really needed to use that quinacridone rose in this painting, otherwise everything was going to look um, a little too dull. And so now more quinacridone rose over the top of this petal. Um, and once you use some in one place, you really need to move it around the painting and use it elsewhere. There, I'm just blotting out some of that color on the left to bring back that little hint of light that's hitting that petal. So over here, I never did finish that quinacridone gold wash over the top, so just finishing that up and adding it to the left side as well. But the left side looked a little more rosy and um, more violet to me, so I used the violet wash first and then added a little bit of a light quinacridone gold wash over the top later. On the one on the right side with the tiger stripes, I felt looked a little more gold. So I started with the gold and I'll probably add a little bit of a light uh, purpley wash over that in a little bit. So now brightening everything with that quinacridone rose and trying not to use so much of it that it overpowers. So just a little bit where it's really bright in the photo and then softening it with water um, next to that hard edge. Just clear water on that edge. So I'm working wet on dry and then softening the edge. And maybe even moving the paint around a little bit around the petal if I think it needs it. So you can see that striping really start to pop and uh, add a lot more contrast and warmth to these petals here up above, which is really my focal point. This is where I want you to draw your eye into the painting. So I think that quinacridone rose is really helping to do this. Also if you notice, if you look at the photo on the left, there's no little bit of white in the center there of the kind of vortex <laughs> up above. Um, but I I started with that. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there because I do think that even helps to kind of draw your eye in even though it's not in the original photo. And these are just personal subjective little judgments you make as you paint. Now I'm just um, softening that petal down below. It was really, really bright with the contrast between the white and that dark moon glow color. Um, now on this petal, adding a little more blue, uh, violet blue. And just use light washes over light washes over light washes until you get the until you get the dimension that you want, until you get the color that you want, 
and it just takes a lot of patience and a lot of time to do a painting like this when you're working in watercolor and I, I believe in oils too um, I like to work in real light washes and I believe some oil painters like to work that way as well but this is a time-honored watercolor technique and it's a technique that works So just again going over with quinacridone rose and strengthening the striping on the petals above. And you notice I switched to a small brush and I like to work from a large brush down to a small brush normally unless I'm doing those little zebra stripes there. But it's normally a good rule of thumb to start large and then work till you're getting to the small details. Um, small details are for your final few layers and that's when you can really um, just craft your piece until it's just right. Now this is golden absorbent ground which is something that um, is a great tool to use if you've lost a little white um, just and I would only use it for very small areas and here I just thought I didn't like how that little yellow area is not showing up enough and I think I lost a little too much white when I was painting the striping down here so as you can see I'm just painting a little bit more of that white back on there using the absorbent ground and what this does is creates a nice paintable surface so that you can go back over it after um, you've painted a couple coats and let them dry in between. You can go back over it with your color and use it just as if it's a watercolor paper surface again. So there, um, I've painted my beautiful iris from my summer garden and I'm really happy with the color and all the textures and the folds of the petals and the lighting most of all. I hope you've enjoyed this painting today and I hope you give it a try. And now don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and stop by and check out my webpage, my Facebook page, or take a look at my Instagram account if you'd like to learn more about me, my art, and my children's book illustrations.